Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast and today we're going to talk about the lost cinemas of London's railway stations. In these days of modern technology we have access to news in our hands through our mobile phones or through our computers, laptops, devices, the internet, etc. But it wasn't always like that, you know. Uh, when I was young, girl, I remember uh, two cinemas in London which were based at the railway stations, Victoria and Waterloo. So if you've ever been in London... I'm sure those names are familiar to you. Uh, these cinemas were designed to show rolling news. So while you were waiting for your train, you could pop in and catch up with the news. Many of us may have forgotten that this was a major purpose of our cinemas to give us up-to-date news. And in fact, before you watched a movie, Pathé news bulletins would come across your screen. Pathé news is very interesting. The Pathé archive is all online. I think part of it is free, part of it is premium. So if you're interested in the news stories they actually broadcast, you can find them all online. Pathé is... P-A-T-H-E. Oh, I think the E had an accent. I'm sure it's a French company. I don't know about that, but I remember reading recently that they had found an additional archive in Oxford Street in London while renovating a building. But anyway, getting back to my point. Yeah, I remember two cinemas. Uh, one was in Waterloo Station. One was in Victoria. Now, I'm not that old to remember them being functional. I think the one at Waterloo had closed in 1970, which is before I was born. But I remember the building was still there, and the sign was still outside of it, and that didn't change until the 80s. Um, yeah, it was a place where... It, they they had said it was automated because you put a coin in and it allowed you access to the cinema. It was like one of these, well, I suppose now we would call them automated gates. You put your ticket in and the barrier opens. So for its time, it was probably quite advanced. Um, yes, yeah, so you put a penny in or however much it was. We had different money in those days. Decimalization didn't come in until 1971, and it allowed you access to watch cartoons, movies, and news uh, until your train came. The one at Victoria Station, uh, it didn't close until the 1980s. That one I do remember, and it was quite common in the 70s and 80s if you were in London just to take the kids into a local cinema in the train station to shut them up. Um, I remember being there with my grandparents. So that was more natural and normal uh, than having the internet that we have today. Very interesting. And the memories of these things seem to have vanished so fast, you know? I mean, can you imagine today standing at a train station and the train station having a cinema to give you news? That's something that's long since gone. And sadly, memories of it seem to have long since gone as well. But I remember the one in Victoria Station. The entrance was on Buckingham Palace Road, and I think if you're ever in London, you probably can still see the entrance there, uh, or at least part of it, if you look closely enough. Um, yeah, it showed news, but by the 80s, of course, news sources were 
vastly improved. So you could buy local newspapers, which were updated maybe during the day. Um, so the cinema wasn't really so necessary. So by the time it closed, it was only showing cartoons and movies. I think news wasn't something it really had to carry anymore because of the daily newspapers. Um, yeah, very interesting, isn't it, that we can think back. So maybe in your country also, they had cinemas around. I mean, cinemas generally were very popular because TV wasn't. I know that my parents in the 60s and 70s, uh, they had heard about President Kennedy dying while they went to watch a movie. Can you imagine being at the cinema and suddenly a news bulletin comes to tell you that the president has been shot? That That's one of the weirdest things to think back on how news was presented to us, whereas now our phone would just bleep and you look at it. So, yeah, next time you're in London, just spare a thought for uh, those cinemas which were in train stations. I'd love to know if any around Glasgow had cinemas. I doubt that they did have because this area was very industrial. So there, there wouldn't really be people who were so interested in getting news so quickly. Maybe in the city of Glasgow or Edinburgh, it would have been more popular because I think Edinburgh is where the uh, clerks were. It's very much a clerk city, you know, working in offices and these things. But Glasgow was, was more hard working uh, and very laborious, very, very difficult times they lived in. So I can't imagine anybody stopping off to pop into the cinema to get up to date news. Um, but maybe in the later years, in the 80s and 90s, uh, these cities, of course, were moving away from industry under Margaret Thatcher and heading towards uh, some kind of office support, customer support-based uh, ideals. So, yeah, and now if you walk around uh, many of our cities, even that's so changing Glasgow in the 90s was very much a financial hub for uh, the country. There were there were offices everywhere for insurance and other things. And now they're all being converted into apartment blocks, which is very strange. The government keeps saying, oh, yes, you know, Scotland's very wealthy. Really? Where's all the money then? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, getting back to... Getting back to cinemas in the in the train stations, this was very common. So next time you're in London, do have a look for uh, Waterloo Station and Victoria Station. And as you walk through with all these automated boards, just spare a moment to think about the boards that used to click. Do you remember when the new times were coming up? You would hear a kick, 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 and these little numbers would flip on the boards because they weren't digital, you see. And uh, uh, spare a thought for the news cinemas, which were inside. Wow, amazing and completely forgotten now in these automated days that we have. Okay, that's it for me today. Enjoy your day. See you. Bye.